Why ETS replaced a sleeper express that used to operate on peninsular Malaysian rail lines? ETS is an electrified express rail services operating in the western part of peninsular Malaysia with maximum uh, operation speed of 140 km per hour. ETS greatly improved speed and comfortability of rail travel in Malaysia. Somehow there are faint voices in the social medias that dissatisfy with the pricey ETS ticket, which is more expensive than the Funk Sleeper Express. Sleeper Express with beds and cabins on the west coast has been terminated in the year 2016. And you might be wondering why ETS replaced the decades old uh, Sleeper Express that was affordable to everyone. In addition, the reason that ETS was chosen instead of high-speed train to serve major Malaysian cities. Let's take a journey on a bullet-shaped train and learning of why ETS replaced the older sleeper express on Malaysian rail. ETS is a short of electric train service, the electrified rail express serving cities in seven states in Malaysia and also federal territory of Kuala Lumpur. ETS is operated by government-owned national rail company Kereta Pitanah Melayu, better known as KTM. The service was launched on 12 of August 2010 by using Class 91 Electric Multiple Unit or EMU built by Hyundai Rotem, made in Korea. The train pioneered the first stage of ETS operation between Kuala Lumpur and Ipoh 220 km to the north. Before I proceed further, let me make it clear. There are so many videos related with the ETS that if I title this video the history of ETS, there might be only like 20 people watching this video. Thus, I have a hard time choosing the right title, the best title for this video. So using technology, chat GPT, what are the suggested title for this video? Why all look sound just the same? To understand the rationale of why ETS replaced the Sleep Express, the only way to understand is to write the train itself. Based on the suggestion number 5 by the, from the chatbot ChatGPT, taking the ETS train from Kuala Lumpur to Penang, a spectacular journey. So. I decided to take a trip to Penang on April 2023, which is during Ramadan, a week before the major holiday of IDF3. The train used in this service is Class 93 EMU built by CRRC, made in China. The model has two classes, Standard Class and Business Class, together with a pointier nose shape akin of a bullet train. To enter the platform, passengers need to scan QR code provided after purchasing the ticket, which can be easily downloaded from the email or appeared on the KTM Kids app. The era of paper ticket and paper clips are gone. An era where the sleeper express, such as the legendary express truck yet, was on the rail. Before the existence of electric train, express rail services were run on the sleeper and seat carriages are pulled by the diesel uh, locomotive. There were three different classes uh, which are first class seat, second class seat and hard rock third class seat which everyone says is really cheap 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 because it is obviously cheap. And there were two types of sleeper, first class cabin and second class bed. You might remember the names that used to ply along the route of past expresses such as Express Rakyat, Senandung Langkawi, Senandung Sustra and also Senandung Wow. I made a video related uh, about the past sleeper express and only one remaining still in operation. Uh, the link is somewhere maybe here you can watch later. And next we need to understand why the sleeper express uh, lose money and become the burden of a KTM financial situation lead to its replacement to ETS. Malaysian economy has been developing fast since 1980s in line with the industrialization of East Asia at the time. To improve the transportation demanded by industrial sector, better road and expressways were constructed across the peninsula Malaysia. Increasing household income and subsidized petrol means owning a car is affordable to many and the completion of North South Expressway in 1994 makes the road travel faster and more convenient than taking the trains. 
772 km is length from Bukit Kayu Hitam, Kedah to Johor Bahru. The travel duration from one end to another in Plus Highway is only about 10 hours, not including the rest stop. As a comparison, Nandung Langkawi from uh, Padang Besar in Perlis to Johor Bahru in the south took about 18 hours and 30 minutes. Uh, meanwhile, Padang Besar to Kat Central is about 12 hours if there is no delays. And by looking at this timetable, the frequency of the trip is limited to only one return trip uh, between Padang Besar and Johor Bahru every day. If you miss one train, you need to sleep on the station and wait until tomorrow. In addition, trains are prone to delays and cancellation due to various factors, engine failures, flood, landslide, trespassing, broken signals and other unexplainable mysteries. If a road or expressway is closed due to accident, flood or landslide, traffic can be diverted to other alternative roads. Not so with the rail, if the track is closed, that's it, the train has nowhere to go. Train ticket is cheap because the ticket price is controlled by the Ministry of Transport. Any attempt to raise the ticket price will face a strong opposition from the public. At the same time, KTM has lesser money to maintain the aging carriages due to increasing costs. What more to replace the old carriages with a new one? The Strong Railway Workers Union makes any attempt to cut the salary to reduce the operation costs unthinkable. At the end, the aging carriages cause lower service satisfaction, mechanical issues and higher costs of maintenance and repairs. With combination of increasing car ownership, better road service to completion of the North-South Expressway, competition with the express bus and aging carriages, the number of passengers taking sleeper expresses plummeted. From 2010, 2.35 million passengers to only 1.3 million passengers in 2015. Therefore, there is a need of a faster and reliable train service in order to regain the loss of passengers and also the loss of income. Electrified double tracking project was started in the year 2002 with numerous delays, lawsuit and politicking. Electric uh, train was chosen due to faster acceleration, lower maintenance costs, and it looked good too. Perfect for making click bait thumbnails by foreign train influencers. ChatGPT also suggested a clickbait title such as number one, Exploring Malaysia by ETS Train, a high speed journey. First thing first, ETS is not technically a high speed train. Ignore what other YouTubers start try to convince you this is Malaysian high speed or similar bullshit that to get your eyeball into the catchy thumbnails and titles. According to the International Union of Railways UIC and definition by European Union Standard, high speed uh, railway is a railway that can serve trains with operating speed of 200 km per hour or higher and the top speed of the ETS is 160 km per hour while its maximum operating speed is 140 km per hour which makes ETS operating speed way below the definition of high speed railway then why ETS look like this? I mean look at the sleek bullet like nose shape as how high speed should look like. Pointy. The reason is that the ETS operated on a meter gauge rail which is the rail gauge used by KTM. Meter gauge has a gap of 1 meter. All high speed railway in the world except Sapsan in Russia and Afrosyop in Uzbekistan both use Russian gauge 1.5 to 4 meters. Almost all of the high speed trains around the world except those two use the standard gauge uh, rail which has a 1.43 meter gap between the rails. Because meter gauge rail is narrower than the standard gauge rail, the permissible speed of the, the train on the meter gauge uh, rail is slower as well. Think of the narrower road makes vehicle slower than the wider road. As a comparison, Kelaya Express, which is the airport train from KL Central, the main station in Kuala Lumpur, to KL International Airport, has a higher operating speed of 160 km per hour on standard gauge rail. All these technical explanation raise a few questions. Why choose electric train instead of diesel? Why meter rail gauge instead of standard should be faster? And why not just make it a high speed rail? Let's talk about electric first. Uh, electric train is more expensive uh, to buy and electric cable is more expensive to set up. But in the long run, the operating cost of electric train is lower than the diesel train. 
electric trains are more reliable and punctual than diesel trains due to its speed and lesser mechanical parts. And furthermore, diesel trains are more prone to breakdown which cause delays and fluctuating diesel price cause uncertainty on operation costs. Meanwhile, the electric price is more stable than the diesel market price and electric can be uh, sources from the renewable energy. Electric train moves and accelerated faster which led to higher turnout. What is turnout? Okay, let me explain. A crew for of drivers and staff on diesel trains such as Express Rakyat from Kuala Lumpur to Butterworth, uh, Penang need to work 10 hours on a single trip. The same number of drivers and staff on ETS could make a single trip on same destination within 4 hours. ETS could make um, twice the trips than diesel trains which led to higher turnover. Turnover could uh, simply explain as to how long a business can complete a transaction or service within a specific time. In this case, ETS could double the turnover of passengers in less than 10 hours compared to the older express truck yard. As a result, the number of passengers served could be doubled while the number of working staff are still similar or just the same. After ETS replaced the Sleeper Express, the cost of running the night train such as laundry, cleaning services, security, and overtime night pay can be reduced or just being eliminated. Furthermore, did you notice that the station that served by ETS except Gemas uh, closed at night? Closing station at night is only possible when the sleeper train is no longer in operation. Faster electric train means uh, more trips can be made which led to higher turnover and higher revenue. The termination of a sleeper express means that reduction of night operating costs as well. And this situation is not only unique in Malaysia. Japan and South Korea have developed high speed rail and faster electric train rail services which covers the whole country within just a single day. The development allowed train station to be closed at night. As a result, there is a very few night sleeper re uh, express remain both in Japan and also in South Korea, reducing the cost and staffing needed. Okay, next, meter gauge rail, not the standard gauge one. ETS is one of the fastest train on the meter rail gauge in the world with 140 km per hour maximum operating speed. Meter gauge rail is the legacy of British colonialization where British engineers and Indian laborers built meter gauge rail to speed up the construction and lower the cost. Then why did that KTM did not switch to standard gauge rail when the double tracking project commenced in the year 2002? The reason is simple, standard gauge rail need, oh, The reason is simple, standard rail gauge need wider land and straighter alignment does more construction costs. Standard rail gauge is bloody expensive both in construction cost and also the ticket price. More expensive construction cost means higher ticket price. Take a look at comparison of ETS on meter gauge rail and KLI Express on standard gauge rail. A trip from Kuala Lumpur to Ipoh, 220 km of distance with ETS costs about 35 ringgit. While KLI Express, the airport rail from KL Central to the airport, 52 km of distance costs 55 ringgit. 55 ringgit for a 30 minute trip is ridiculously expensive by average Malaysian. I make a video about it. The link is um yeah, you can watch this after you watch the the Sleeper Express videos. And in addition, Southeast Asian countries such as Thailand, Cambodia, Myanmar and Vietnam use meter gauge rail as well, allowing seamless international cargo and passenger services across mainland Southeast Asian countries. After the introduction of ETS, how well the public responds. The Pioneer ETS route from Stromban via KL Central to Ipoh has been opened on August 2010, cutting the travel time from 4 hours to 2 and a half hours from Kuala Lumpur to Ipoh. Be uh, however, between 2012 and 2015, ETS service between KL Central and Stromban was terminated because 11 commuter stations which uh, served the commuter line and uneven uh, rail tracks and limited bypass for the ETS make the time difference of trips made by ETS compared with commuter is no much difference. Together with the new electrified rail, new railway stations were built as old wooden stations is no longer suitable uh, to expect the increasing number of passengers and unsuitable to be retrofitted with the modern amenities. New stations are equipped with ticket machines, gates which were opened by QR codes and step-free access such as lift and ramps to allow disabled to ride the train comfortably. 
electric train are disabled friendly too with a wheelchair place, the large bathroom and adequate signage. A huge improvement compared to the old sleeper train which is hardly accessible. The expansion of electrified double track from Ipoh to Padang Besar increased the total passengers on the train from 2.05 million passengers in year 2015 to 4.1 million uh, passengers in 2017 and uh, re reduced a little bit to 3.9 million in 2019. Speed is the key to regain the trust of the people who are switching to cars and buses that are faster than Sleeper Express. According to one research paper uh, published in the year 2017, 72.7% of the ETS passengers in Ipoh arrive at the station by car. Which means that Malaysians are still strongly dependent on cars to move around. Therefore, if the train is lower than driving, it is much more convenient just to drive. ETS increased the revenue of financially struggling KTM. In the year 2010, the diesel run Sleeper Express earned 93.1 million, while the ETS in the first year earned 6.3 million ringgit. Six years later, the last year of the diesel operated Sleeper Express, Intercity earned 40.3 million ringgit, while ETS earned 145.5 million ringgit. The introduction of ETS also has rejuvenated all cities that has been stagnant due to young people migrated to Kuala Lumpur or Penang or elsewhere to seek better jobs. Cities served by ETS such as Ipoh, Taiping and Padang Besar witnessed a surge in tourism activities specifically tourism related to old city and nostalgia streets. ChatGPT want to explain the ETS expansion too when the board reply. In 2019, KTM introduced the ETS call service which offers a more luxurious service, service experience with additional amenities such as on-board food and beverage service. Luxurious travel. <laughs> See this video. Does this look luxurious for you? Eating microwavable food in a plastic box is never a luxurious uh, travel experience but at least, at least, uh, the menu offered on what is TS is still better than Ryanair. What is the future of ETS? Is it good? Is it otherwise? This question has been asked by ChatGPT number 10, the future of train travel in Malaysia, the ETS expansion plan. Currently, the electrified double tracking project from Gemas to Johor Bahru is ongoing and scheduled to complete in 2025 after numerous delays. The new ETS terminus in Johor Bahru is within walking distance to Sultan Iskandar building, the immigration complex where people and vehicles bound for Singapore. By 2026, future ETS passengers could walk to the new Rapid Transit System or RTS station in nearby Bukit Chaga for a seamless journey across the border to Singapore. RTS will connect ETS on Malaysian side and MRT Thomson East Coast Line or TEL on the Singaporean side. Thus, the RTS connection is crucial to reconnect Malaysia Reconnect Malaysia and Singapore Transit System after the closure of the KTM-owned Tanjung Pagar Station in 2011. However, the expansion of ETS does not mean the Sleeper Express is totally abandoned. The only operating Sleeper Express, Express Raya Timuran, is spared due to single track on Eastern Coast KTM East Coast Line from uh, Gemas to Tumpat. Electrification and double tracking is far from possibility due to scarce population, limited economic activities and the upcoming East Coast Rail Line serving Pahang, Terengganu and Kelantan. On certain public holidays, KTM offered special sleeper express from KL Central to Hadiai, Thailand, commonly known as Sawadi Express operated nightly. Meanwhile, on the major Islamic holidays of IDV3 and Idi Adha, special sleeper express operated between KL Central and Tumpat on the East Coast. A trip on the special sleeper uh, from Kuala Lumpur to the East Coast will take about 16 hours. Sounds long, but it is better than uh, stay in the train rather than stuck in the road traffic for more than 6 hours which is increasingly common for the holidays. As a conclusion, train is good and electric train is accessible to everyone. What do you think of ETS? Comment down below. If you want to ride ETS, the service is offered on station throughout the electrified KTM line from Gemas in the south to Padang Besar in the north. The ticket price varied by classes, standard or business. Standard ticket from KL Central to Butterworth Penang costs 88 ringgit. 
Discounts are applicable to Malaysians who are senior citizens, disabled, government pensioners, students and armed forces still in service. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new about ETS and why ETS replaced Sleeper Express as the main rail service in Western Peninsula Malaysia. Thank you so much again for watching and see you in the next video.